As the web has really taken off and as web applications have really taken off, at some point it became obvious that we could perform the following experiment, which is what if instead of a computer that can run all sorts of general purpose applications, I only gave you a web browser. That's it. So a lightweight computer that only runs a web browser. And to some degree, Chrome OS and the Chromebook project that Google started was an experiment in see if you, seeing if you can realize this design point. So what does this mean? So I don't use a lot of desktop software on my computer, which is not a Chromebook, it's an Apple laptop, but the main piece of software I use all the time is a web browser. But let's think a little bit about the types of applications we would might want to use on a standalone computer and how can we replace them with something that runs in the browser. So um, easy place to start is mail. Okay. So for example, if you install Apple, you get this mail client and it's I don't know, I hate standalone mail clients. I think they're really dumb. Um, so, but you get one. I'm sure if you install Windows, you get some sort of crippled version of Outlook or something like that. So, okay, we're not gonna do that. We're going to use a webmail client. And that could be Gmail, that could be Hotmail, uh, that could be Yahoo Mail. There's a gazillion out there. They're all free. Um, they all work pretty well. You know, whatever is your personal preference. I guess it's called Outlook Mail, Outlook Online or something like that. Anyway, so okay, so this is pretty easy, right? I can get rid of mail. And, and to be honest, I'm just gonna throw this out there. I don't think there's any usability differences between these two. And in, in fact, if anything, the webmail clients that I've used are a little bit more usable than the standalone mail clients that people use on their computers. I don't don't know why they use them. I don't know. Anyway, there's lots of things in the world that are mysterious to me. So this is one of them. Uh, okay, so mail, we're good. Uh, let's think about some of the other applications. So we might want to watch movies. Okay, so um, I might have something like iTunes installed on my computer. Um, but And what can I do to replace iTunes? There's, I don't know, like a hundred options. Um, YouTube allows me to buy movies and, and, and watch them. Um, I've got Netflix. I've got um, Amazon has streaming services. I mean, there are so many possibilities over here. Um, and, and again, I would argue again that this is a fair, if not a great trade. The iTunes, I'm gonna get hate mail from Apple. The iTunes interface is awful. Uh, it's buggy, it crashes, it won't show you previews. It's, it's, you know, to the degree, here's the thing, I mean, these should be better, right? They're running on my computer, they should be really fast and awesome. Um, but in so many cases, the, the web-based equivalents, again, in my personal opinion, because um, I get to have those from time to time, um, the web-based equivalents are better. So, okay, I, I would totally make this a fair trade. In fact, I recently gave up on iTunes. I was so tired of how terrible it was. And now um, my, my wife and I watch everything on YouTube and we're very happy. Okay, uh, let's keep going here. So music, uh, again, something that, you know, maybe I would use something like iTunes for. Um, so many options over here, whether it's uh, Google Music, whether it's um, Spotify, you know, there's certainly no shortage of ways to replace uh, Spotify, ways to replace your standalone music client with something that runs in the cloud. Um, okay, well, we were sort of in the entertainment space. Let's talk about some other things. What about documents? You know, oh no, how am I gonna get rid of Word and Excel and things like that? Uh, how about Google Docs? Um, you know, actually pretty functional systems that enable people to collaborate with each other in ways that they couldn't necessarily if they were using these types of things. And so I, you can go on and on here, you know. I can replace Dropbox with Google Drive. You know, there's just lots of different ways for me to take these things that had to run natively and replace them with stuff that can run inside my web browser and therefore inside this little lightweight uh, Chromebook. And there are some pretty significant advantages to this. So for example, uh, Chromebooks and other computers that try to prevent me from storing things locally and encourage me to use the cloud mean that if I take that thing and drop it off you know, the roof of my, my house and it crashes into a thousand pieces, I have lost nothing because everything that I was using that for is in the cloud somewhere. All the photos, all my music, all the videos that I purchased, anything like that, I'm not going to lose anything. All the mail that I haven't sent yet, whatever. Um, so that's a pretty significant advantage. Um, so we, we are really sort of getting to this point where the cloud can become an operating system with the web browser is sort of a thin client just providing an interface for people to use locally.